the last two days, uh, I have been asked questions which require divisibility rules of 101. And then a student asked, what if the divisor instead of 101 was 1001? Are these rules necessary for CAT? No, they are not. However, students being students, they like to try out a lot of difficult questions. And if you are doing, then don't just accept the answer, but also look at the reasoning. At least there should be some development of yours, right? Not just awareness of a particular question. Right? So let's have a very simplistic understanding of the divisibility rules. This is not the rigorous theoretical proof. It is only good enough for a casual usage. Uh, I'm pretty sure you would know the divisibility rule of 9 and 11. Also see the pattern. I'm checking the rules of 9 and 11, of 99 and 101, of 999 and 1001. Right? I hope you can see that pattern that they all are one less than or one more than a power of 10, 10, 100, 1000. So, uh, if you are aware of where the divisibility rule of 9 comes from, again, as I said, a very common, um, uh, common man's proof, yeah? not a the theoretical proof. If the number, uh, let's say I'm writing it from the right end, Make sure I'm writing it, uh, you notice that. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and let's say that way, the numbers. So let's stop at G for the moment. I can always write this number as 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9, G into 10 raised to 6, plus F into 10 raised to 5, plus e into 10 raised to 4, plus d into 10 raised to 3, plus c into 10 square, plus b into 10 plus a. Further, I also know that 10 divided by 9 will give me a remainder of 1. And thus 10 square divided by 9 will also give me a remainder of 1 and 10 cube also and so on. All of them give me a remainder of 1. So this number when divided by 9, when divided by 9, the remainder will be, I just divide this by 9. Now I don't know what a g is. Let me make it look like a G. So I leave that, but I do know 10 traced to 6 divided by 9 gives me remainder 1. So could I say it's G? This will also be F. This will also be E, D, C, B, and A. So the remainder will be the sum of digits. And if the sum of digits themselves become divisible by 9, the remainder will obviously become 0. Now we are using a little bit of remainder theory, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure you know. Let's change this to divisibility rule of 11. Now, if I look at 11, 10 divided by 11 gives me a remainder of minus 1 and not 1. Whereas 10 square divided by 11 gives me a remainder of plus 1. 10 cube divided by 11 will again give me a remainder of minus 1 and so on. Right? So, when the original number is divided by 11, the remainders are, let's see, 10 raised to 6. 10 raised to 6 gives me a positive remainder. So, this will become G. 10 raised to 5 is going to give me a negative minus 1. So, this is going to be a minus F. 10 raised to 4 will give me a plus 1. 10 cube will give me a minus 1. So, the remainder here is a minus 1. Minus 1 into D is a minus D plus C minus B plus A. And I am sure this is what you know of as, let me write it here itself. The number is G, F, E, D, C, B, A. What is this? All the positive ones, if you look at all the positive ones, they will form a set of alternate numbers A, C, G, E. So we find the sum of this. 
right? And remember, you have to start from here. You don't have a choice. So if you have used the Takshila books, we call this the sum of or a set of numbers starting from the unit place. Okay, and this is nothing but A plus C plus E plus G and the other set is nothing but starting from the tens place. This is going to be B plus B plus F and what do we do to get this? This expression is as good as U minus T. So the remainder when divided by 11 will be the sum of set of alternate digits starting with the unit digit minus the sum of set of other alternate digits right if this turns out to be 0 or a multiple of 11 the remainder is going to be 0 if this turns out to be 5 the number is not divisible by 11 the remainder in fact is 5 let's see now before i go to 99 and 101 i hope i think you should get an idea of this and try to be ahead of me how do you frame rules for 99 and 101 before I get to the specific rule, I would again remind you that there are other techniques also. 99 is very easily be factorizable as 11 into 9. So you could find the remainders with 11, 9 and then do some LCM business, right? Same thing goes everywhere. This is just out of uh, your curiosity. For your curiosity, I'm just doing this. It's not necessary. What we should realize now is that I would be going in powers of 100. 100 when divided by 99 gives me a remainder of 1. Okay, and let me write it as powers. 10 raised to 4 divided by 99 gives me remainder 1. Why? Because 10 square gives me 1. And 10 squared when I square it, I will still get 1 square which is 1. And 10 raised to 6 divided by 99 will also give me remainder 1 and so on. Right? Similarly, for 101, I should realize that 100 or 10 square divided by 101 gives me a remainder of minus 1. Whereas 10 raised to 4 will give me a remainder of minus 1 square, which is a plus 1. 10 raised to 6 will give me a remainder of minus 1 cubed or plus 1 into a minus 1 where the remainder will be a minus 1 and so on. So, if you have got the idea, the only change that you need to do from 9 and 10 is, let's say if the number is, now I am writing it in gen, uh, with different a set of alphabets, let me start with G. Uh, okay. So, I am writing it from left to right g h i j k l m n or let me put an o p also but remember when the packets that you need to make for 99 and 101 is packets of 2 o p m n k l i j g h and so how do i write it in uh, uh, sort of, let's say a base sort of way, I write it as 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I can write it as GH into 10 raised to 8. Think you should be able to do this on your own. IJ into 10 raised to 6 plus KL into 10 raised to 4 plus mn into 10 square right this here if i keep i can write this as gh 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 plus ij 1 2 3 4 5 6 right and so on plus kl 1 2 3 4 plus mn 0 0 plus op this is an o okay and i just add them up right so this is what i'm doing here so, and so, so this method, again, I'm not really kicked about knowing these rules, but knowing these manipulations may sometimes help you out somewhere, right? So, it's just a feel-good video again, right? Or, so, what do we have? OP. Remember, O is a no, alphabet here. OP will remain as OP. So, when I want, uh, so, so, let me hear when this number is divided, when divided by 99, 
the remainder that I will be getting is, I know this will give me a remainder of 1. So, I will be getting GH plus IJ plus KL plus MN plus OP. So, so a rule for 99 is just divide the number into packets of 2, 2 digits starting from the unit place student. Start from the unit end. Okay, and what do you do to all the packets? Just sum up all the packets. Whatever you get, that is the remainder. Year after use remainder theory. If this number is a very large number, divide it again by 99. And what are you going to do when we need to divide by 101? When I need to divide by 101, the remainder is going to be 101 10 raised to 8 gives me a minus 1. Okay. No, wait, 10 raised to 8, no. 10 raised to 8 will give me a plus 1. Okay, so I'll be having GH. 10 raised to 6 gives me a minus 1. So I'll have minus IJ plus KL minus MN and plus OP. So could I segregate this as GH plus KL plus OP minus of IJ plus MN. Right? And so what is this talking about? This is set of alternate groups. Alternate groups. Right? What alternate? Uh, if I were to write here again, this is G H I J K L M N O P. You divided it into packets of 2, 2, 2. And now what do you do? Take the alternate ones starting from the unit place. Add them up. Take the other set of alternate one, add them up, the difference. This difference is going to give you the remainder, right? Uh, and so let me finish it off in this screen itself. Uh, if the same thing, okay, rather let me take a pause, clear the screen and then start again.